All right, so at this point, guys, we are going to head off towards this direction. I want to unlock that tower, and I want to get a, you know, a lay of the land and figure out which direction we want to go next after that. So there's a there's an ass load of guardians around here, though. That's really unfortunate, because I do not feel equipped to fight them right now. Maybe if I had some shields in reserve, but as it is... Motherfucker. Yeah. There's flying assholes over that way. We could try and go the long way around to the left. What is that glow up there? What is that? You know what? I think I saw that before and then never went for it. Maybe we should do that. We need to steer wide around these bros anyway. Let's head up there and see what that is. Even though it's like really far away, this is going to take a while. That's okay. Even if we don't even get to that tower in this session, I'm happy to just be out running around. But yeah, that's amazing, guys. So, there's a lot of backstory to the story in this game that I feel like we're missing out on right now. I don't know if those cracks will ever be filled in, but they say that, like, the origin of the Guardians and Calamity Ganon, as he's been known, not just regular Ganon, like, all that shit happened, like, 10,000 years ago. I just realized that's a fucking Divine Beast. I've been seeing that thing flying around all game, and I thought it was, like, Skyloft 2.0, but nope, that's the Rito Divine Beast right there. Holy shit. I doubt I can get a picture from this far back. Actually, we couldn't take pictures of the Divine Beast anyway, could we? Eh. That's awesome. But yeah, so, like, the origin story of, like, the things that are happening in, in this game happened 10,000 years ago. And you have to assume that all the previous games happened even before that. I mean, we, we guess we really can't say. But that accounts for a lot of freaking time <laughs> in the overall Zelda lore. So Skyward Sword is supposed to be, like, the first game in the series, chronologically speaking. Which, that actually kind of pisses me off, too. Because I really thought that, like, Ocarina of Time was awesome. Ocarina of Time was supposed to be, like, the origin story when that game came out. It explained... Uh, like, how the land was created with the three goddesses, Din, Nehru, and Furor. And it kind of served as, like, an origin story for the conflict between Link and Ganon and, you know, Zelda. And how it all kind of tied together. And then, like, after that happened, they kind of kept, like, going back to the prequel well and establishing, like, an even earlier timeline. Minish Cap did that, too. And that one kind of pissed me off the most, I think. Because it just wasn't that good lore wise it was a great game that's one of the handheld games that was made by capcom and like game wise it's actually really good it's, it's a great game uh but like they tried to do some stupid shit where like they explained the origin of link's hat in that game like it was a uh <laughs> some kind of like deformed wizard with a curse on him who just turned into like a big green flabby pile of shit and um kind of sat on Link's head and served as his hat for that game and established the tradition of why Link always had a green cap. Which, I gotta admit, I, I find kind of stupid. And then they just kind of blew that story out of the water in Skyward Sword anyway, because he had a green hat in that game, so... I just kind of like to pretend, like, that whole aspect of that game doesn't exist, because I think it's dumb. And then Skyward Sword came out and took place before Ocarina of Time and both and Minish Cap, both of them. And uh kind of like served as like the real origin story. Not just for like the first Link and Zelda and Ganon, but it kind of tried to explain why all this shit keeps happening. Like why they're locked in this eternal struggle for all of time. Which is a great idea and a great concept, but I have a couple issues with like, the execution of that as well. I probably won't get into that right now, especially because I'm going to fall off this cliff and die and get angry. Uh, but I kind of wanted to focus more on, like... We should use up this ice rod. Frozen shoes. Yeah, they don't stay frozen shoes, though. It's bullshit. If I freeze them beforehand and beat them apart, they should be like ice chews, shouldn't they? That's what seems logical to me. I gotta tell you guys, having this small of a stamina meter is like freaking killing me. <laughs> I'm like dying right now. There we go. 
But the thing that Skyward Sword did do right was establishing the origin of the Master Sword. So it was apparently originally existed as the Goddess Sword, created by the Goddess Hylia, which I also <laughs> sort of have a problem with. I don't understand, like, they had this really cool backstory with, like, the three goddesses, Din, Nehru, and Furor, and how they created the land, and they created the creatures in the land, and then they left, and the spot where they left was where the Triforce appeared and became, like, the Sacred Realm, and it's just a really cool backstory. It's like some Norse mythology shit, and I like it. And then they brought in this goddess Hylia shit, which I guess she existed for a while before that story, too. I actually am not sure about that. I'm not sure if she's referenced in, like, the older 2D games. But then they, you know, they bring in Goddess Hylia. Hey, Master Sword's back. That's awesome. And I'm not gonna make it. Oh, I hate this. I hate this. And, uh, the whole plot of that game is that, like, people are living in this, this, like, Skyloft village way in the sky because the surface of the Earth is filled with these horrible monsters that people don't want to have to deal with. And it's never really explained, I don't think, like, where they came from or why they exist. Like, why would the three goddesses put a bunch of monsters there that's just gonna murder all the actual people? I don't know. But people are living in Skyloft, and the goddess sword was something that the goddess Hylia created for people to use against the monsters on the surface. Hey, we're close to Cass. Where is he? Cass? Are we in that spot with the shrine quest with the deer? No, this is like, this is a different place altogether. This doesn't look familiar to me at all. Also, there's like... A freaking portal or something here. What's, what's, what's this all about? Oh, there's gotta be... This has gotta be associated with a Korok somewhere. We have to like fly through that thing or or like hit a boulder through some of those holes like I just got to figure out where and what okay let's talk to Cass maybe he'll have some info for us Cass is ignoring us oh I did not hear your approach I was lost in this song written by my late teacher he passed away several years ago, you see, and this was the last song he taught me. Mm. Excuse me, I fear I may have gotten carried away. Nostalgia will do that to a person. Yeah, it's kind of happening to me right now with all this talk of the Zelda lore. <laughs> I know a song about this place. Would you like to hear the ancient verse passed down in this region? Of course I would, Cass. Oh. Excellent. Without further ado... When a single arrow threads two rings... The shrine will rise like birds on wings. Oh, that's a cool puzzle. That's a really cool puzzle. Okay. Do you think the rings in the song refer to these oddly shaped rocks? And what of the shrine? There's a mystery to be uncovered here, that's for sure. And I get the feeling the truth is beyond my wildest imagination. May the light illuminate your path. Alright. That's actually uh, a relatively easy one. It's easy to understand. It might not be so easy to pull off. But before we get into that, I think there's another Korok puzzle up here. These three trees up here look suspicious to me. And I want to go find out if it's another one of those symmetry puzzles with, like, the apples. Because I think that's going to be the case. Yes, very much so. Okay, so we need to pick... All except... It's it's exactly the same as the last one, I think. They've literally just copy-pasted this puzzle in. <laughs> yeah, I guess you gotta expect that to some degree with the amount of Koroks in this game. I can't really hold that against them too much. Ah, oh, shit. I don't want to accidentally pick the wrong one. You know what? Let's just make this easy on ourselves. There we go. Thanks, buddy. Okay. Grab them acorns, grab them apples. Let's see if we can't find two rings that it would be easy to shoot an arrow through. Uh, this spot over here kind of looks like a candidate. I want to grab these shrooms too, though. So yeah, I'm going to constantly get interrupted while I'm talking about this. I mean, a lot of you guys may already know a lot of the lore in this game, but... 
you know, for those who don't know, like, the lore or the backstory for certain games, I, I think it's fun to talk about. I really like talking about it. But, so, the Master Sword was originally the Goddess Sword, and it existed because the Goddess Hylia created it to fight, like, the shadow monsters on the surface of the planet. And along with it, she created this spirit called Phi. I actually don't know if, if her name's pronounced Phi or Phi. I always said Phi. Uh, neither would surprise me all that much, honestly. And... Phi kind of pissed me off, too. <laughs> Not because of, like, her personality or anything. She was actually a really well-written character. She was pretty cool. But just mechanically in the game, she annoyed the shit out of me because she never shut the fuck up. She was emblematic of how that game just did everything for you, laid out everything for you, wanted you to know frickin' how to do everything. Everything, guys. But that's neither here nor there. The story goes that Fee was a spirit that was created to aid the person who would become the chosen hero and take up the sword to banish evil from the land. And um, when Link became the chosen hero, and started using the Goddess Sword with Fee. They kind of like traveled to different lands and visited like shrines of the Goddess and used them to power up the Master Sword until it became the true Master Sword. But part of that process was kind of like infusing Fee's spirit into the blade. And I think at the end of that game, she said that she was going to basically be like sleeping in the Master Sword eternally. So I don't know like if she ever came back out at any point. But it's, it's kind of suggested that her spirit resides in the Master Sword from game to game. And it's just kind of always been there, like, helping the hero. Whoever the hero happens to be at that given point in, you know, the timeline. And that's a really cool way to kind of make good on the whole, like, the sword chooses the hero. Because it implies that her spirit is still in there, like, making choices. Like, yeah, you're good enough to use me, you're not, yada yada. You know, it gives the, it gives the weapon, like, a, a personality even though you never really see it anywhere else. I, I do like that aspect of the story. That's what Skyward Sword did that made me not hate it so much. Um, I think that this is the one right here, but it's really, really hard. I can't get good footing to actually take a shot through this loop right here. Uh, I mean, with the arc, I don't know. I feel like that's not really gonna work because it's gonna go way too far. Even though there is like drop off on the arrow shots, I just, I don't think this is set up to do that, like a drop shot. I think it would have to be more of a straight shot. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get the footing right. No. Can I stand like? like uh. This is, like, set up so specifically to be, like, really close to doable, but not exactly doable. Just, like, to make you keep trying it. Oh, this is so close, guys. Come on. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, let's look for another spot. Uh? Over here? This has some potential. Oh, that's gotta be it. There's no way that's not it. Okay. How about... Mm, we are gonna have to adjust. This is really good practice. There it is. Very cool. So, the whole reason that I told you guys the story of Fee and the origin of the Master Sword is because that's one of the things that really, like, makes the Master Sword great, in my opinion, is the fact that it's kind of the only thing that actually ties all of the games together. Like, yes, there's Link and Zelda and Ganon in almost all of them, but they're not always the same people. Sometimes they are. Some of the games are, like, direct sequels to others, and it's just literally the same people. But there's been a lot of different Zeldas, there's been a lot of different Links, and there's even been some different Ganondorfs. 
Now, that gets a little tricky depending on how you define, like, a different person, because it's usually, like, the same Ganondorf, but just, like, a resurrection of Ganondorf. Ganondorf is kind of the one guy who's, who's actually, like, usually the same person, just, like, a different resurrection of that person. Whereas Link and Zelda are more like uh, reincarnations, if you will. But as far as I know, it's always the same damn Master Sword. From game to game, across thousands of years, from the origin to right now, it's always been the same sword. And that to me is like, like that makes my loins tingle. I love that type of lore. Okay, so I sh should have been paying attention to this. It said moving in parallel. Looks like there are two Orbs of Destiny up there. Let's see what these switches do. Um, okay. We have to get these in at the same time? Is that it? Or... Oh. No, no, get up! Oh, oh, damn it, I swear to God. Okay. Well, this doesn't seem too hard if we don't have to do them at the same time. We've already got the first one. Oh, 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 it had a little too much momentum there. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> you get both of them in there and it's just like, fuck you. Okay, yeah, that's... Okay, there we go, we did it. That wasn't nearly as hard as I was expecting it to be. <laughs> I'm okay with that, though. The only problem is, we haven't found any bonus chests. And if they're back here, I don't want to have to solve that puzzle again. I just want to find it right now. There's not really a lot of spots where one could be in this place, though. It ain't that big. Oh! Oh, I think I see one... ...down behind. Okay, so if I fly down there... Oh, there's a platform right there that's gonna activate to bring us back. Okay. We're good. Let's go grab that before we finish this. That is just... Oh, there's the chest. <laughs> I thought they were punking me for a second there. Great Thunderblade! Awesome. Oh, what should we drop to get... We should drop this ice rod for sure. Who gives a fuck about an ice rod? Actually, that's... That's somewhat useful. I can see the utility there. Actually, you know, okay, we'll drop the damn stick. <laughs> I have to admit, I'd rather have an ice rod than a tree branch. <laughs> and I still never took a picture of one. There we go. Okay. Oh, and that reminds me of one other thing that I totally forgot to- No! <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? They don't give you a second to run back and get on the platform. They're just like, see you later, dick. That's great. Uh, yeah, so I did forget when I upgraded this armor, <laughs> the Hylian armor, I think it's called, to check for the set bonus on it, which is terrible. Um, but it turns out that there is no set bonus on it, so even though I thought I was missing something, I really wasn't, which is kind of hilarious. I feel like the game kind of punked me right there. It's almost like a troller status type of thing. But I, I guess like the set bonus on that is the fact that the defense is so damn good. They can't have like a set bonus with even more defense, right? That'd be weird. Look at Link just eyeballing that tree branch. He really doesn't want to leave it behind. He's so sad. That tree branch has been with him through thick and thin. And now we're just abandoning it in the dark corner of this shrine. Never to be seen by human eyes again. It is actually kind of sad when you think of it that way. But you know what? Somehow, we will move on. We will persevere. Give me my spirit orb. Yep. Promise of a hero. Okay, so I want to say that we have now done 37 shrines? Yeah. If you guys haven't noticed yet, 
uh, every time we're on a loading screen, it actually gives us a breakdown of our progress through the game up in the upper right corner there. We've got one spirit orb, we've done 37 shrines, we have 56 Korok seeds, and 1,159 rupees. I know I cut out a lot of the loading screen so you guys don't see as much as I do, but yeah. 37 shrines means that we, to this date, have not even done a third of the shrines in this game yet. <laughs> Which is kind of nuts to think about. It's like, geez. How freaking long are we going to have to spend just grinding things out in this game? The answer is quite a long time. Okay, so here's what sucks. I want to climb up to the top of this mountain up there. And... Find out what's going on, but... With this shit-ass stamina wheel, it's honestly going to be really, really difficult. Looks like there's some plateaus over there we could utilize. And, um... I should have some potions, right? That I could utilize... Should I need to? Okay, I've got like five of them. Yeah, I think this should be doable. It'll be a worthy endeavor, seeing what is going on at the top of this place. It may be another shrine quest. It may be a spring of... What's the one we haven't found? A spring of courage? That'd be kind of cool. Okay, I'm going to try this right here. I think I can stand here. Yes. Yes. Stuff like this right here is exactly why I want to go get this armor set upgraded. I think I'm going to do that at like the start of the next session. I'm not sure how long I'm going to play this game for today. Probably not super duper long like I did last time. Because I've got things to do. Being an adult sucks my nuts. Uh, am I going to be able to make this? Yeah, it's going to be tricky. We're going to have to waste a bomb arrow, I think, to knock down whatever's going on up there. Seriously? <laughs> Dick move, game. Make me waste two of them. Watch, I'm just gonna get a bunch of bullshit for it. Flint! And two ambers. I don't think that was worth two bomb arrows. I'm gonna say no! The game trolls me yet again, guys. Although, I, I'm not gonna lie, it is kinda hilarious being trolled by a video game. I wonder what, like, the best troll a video game ever got off on you guys was. I can tell you what mine was. And you know what? I don't think a lot of people know about this, because most people aren't as crazy as I am and won't spend, like, a million hours doing this. But, so, one of my favorite games is Spider-Man 2. Back in the GameCube, PS2, Xbox era. And the way that that game trolled me, this is kind of hilarious. Uh, Bruce Campbell was the narrator in that game. And there were, like, these hint markers scattered all around the world that you could go around and collect and not really collect but you could just go like hit them and then like Bruce Campbell would give you like some kind of hint for the game you know just like a gameplay tip or something he would like actually like speak it out loud when you hit these markers and the game tells you right up front that if you go around and you collect all of the hint markers in the game Bruce Campbell will say something different like they'll all reset and he'll say something different in each one fuck this Fuck everything. Rain. Mm. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. You know what? I'm not doing this right now. I'm not. This is... This is so... Oh. Okay, so, um... Spider-Man 2. I swung all around the city, I collected all of the damn hit markers, because I love Bruce Campbell, guys. I don't know if I mentioned that. Bruce Campbell's like one of my heroes, right? I call him Bruce Jesus Christ Campbell, because that's what he is. He's Jesus Christ. So, I spent all this time swinging all around the city. Okay, this is awesome. Let's just fast travel right back to... Wait, right here. Yeah, just get back up onto the shrine, because this is what we have to do. Because of the fucking rain. Um, I swung all around the city in Spider-Man 2. I collected all the hint markers. And when I finally got them all, it took a long time, guys. It took hours, hours of my time to track them all down. And I finally got them all. And I went to the next hint marker after they all reset. And I found it, and I hit it. And Bruce Campbell's voice pops up, and he says, Something different. And I was like, what? 
So I went to the next one, and I hit that, and Bruce Campbell pops up, and he says, Something different. <laughs> so I went to the next one, and I hit that, and he goes, Something different. <laughs> you guys get the joke at this point. But the best part about it is that he literally had a different recording for every single one. It wasn't even the same line of him saying something different. It was like... It was like a million different recordings of something different. Something different. Something different. And, uh, I couldn't even be mad, honestly, because it was just so hilarious. The fact that a video game had trolled me like that, and the fact that I fell for it, and the fact that they had the balls to do something like that, it was so great, guys. I love that game. And Bruce Campbell, you know, like, if you're gonna get trolled by somebody, get trolled by Bruce Campbell. That's how you know you're living life right. That's my opinion. Give me all the loot. I didn't mean to pick that up, but I'll take the opal. I don't want melee weapons. I want loot. But anyways, we'll just... We're gonna have to go back up there at some point, like when we have better climber's gear, or the game decides to not be a fucking dickhead about it. For now, we'll just continue on towards the tower. What's up, dear? Oh, stupid slow weapon. That was a terrible shot. I thought I had way more arrows than that. Am I still on my bomb arrows? I am. Fuck me. Ugh. And they didn't blow up. Wow, okay, that's actually okay, because now I just learned that bomb arrows don't blow up in the rain. Interesting. I wouldn't have thought that the rain would have stopped that, but I guess it just... It douses the fuse on the bomb. There's certain logic to that. I can't argue against it. The moral there is that the rain just fucking sucks. Like, it just ruins everything in this game. <laughs> It ruins climbing and it ruins bomb arrows. Two things I love, unashamedly. That was fucking cool. Ow, that was not cool. Jerk. Hello, Chobby. Well, you sure made that simpler than it would have been otherwise. I should do something to thank you, I suppose. Monster Extract. Ah, oh, good. It's called Monster Extract. A guy named Kilton brews this stuff up at Fang and Bone. I know all about Kilton. I don't know how that stuff works in cooking just yet, but apparently it's good stuff. We've heard all this dialogue before. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Monster Extract. Actually, that wasn't even really all that expensive to buy from Kilton, but... Hey, free stuff, you know? Gift horse in the mouth and all that. I don't know what that means. 